We're getting ready to move on from the topic of functions, but before we do, let's just make sure that you're familiar with these very useful functions that you will see throughout your mathematical study. So I want to talk to you first about the floor and ceiling functions. Again, I am quite certain you've probably seen these before, but if not, they're pretty straightforward. The floor function essentially tells us to round down to the largest integer less than or equal to x and it's easy to remember this is the floor function because our brackets essentially have a floor and the ceiling function is similar but asks us to round up to the nearest integer um, greater than or equal to x so let's take a look at an example i've got 2.2 and if i'm thinking about 2.2 on a number line then i'm thinking about 2 and then 3 and 2.2 is right around somewhere in there. And if I'm rounding, or if I'm using the ceiling function, the ceiling function says round up to the next integer, and the floor function says round down to the next integer. Same thing happens for my negative 3.7, but just be careful how you put these numbers on the number line. Remember, zero is over here somewhere. This would be negative three, this would be negative four, and negative 3.7 somewhere in here. And then if I'm rounding up for my ceiling function, I end up at negative three. If I'm rounding down to my floor function, I end up at negative four. So just be very careful with your negatives. And I am certain, absolutely certain, that you have had the factorial function before. Factorial function, is essentially denoted by f of n equals n, that's the exclamation point, which means factorial, and it is the product of the first n positive integers when n is a non-negative integer. So for I give you an f of n here, but let's say f of 4, I would take 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That would be my factorial function, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So again, symbolically, it's n, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down until you get to 1. Sterling's formula is fantastic. Um, we're not going to use it a ton right now, but this is a way, because that factorial function gets very large very quickly, um, this is an approximation that we can find of the product of the numbers of n factorial. Here's just one more example for you to try. Um, our function is the floor function of x squared divided by 2, and we're trying to find f of s for the set of s, which includes 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if you'd like, go ahead and press pause and try it yourself before I go through the answer. Otherwise, we're going to get started. So if I'm finding f of 0. That tells me 0 squared divided by 2 and the floor function of that. 0 squared is 0 divided by 2 is 0 and the floor of 0 would of course be 0. If I'm looking at f of 1, f of 1 would be 1 squared over 2 and the floor function. 1 squared is 1, 1 divided by 2 that just gives me 1 half. So what is the floor function of 1 half? That is also 0. Let's do f of 2. f of 2 is the floor function of 2 squared over 2. Whoops. Floor function of 2 squared over 2, which is 2 squared is 4 divided by 2. And the floor function of 2, of course, gives me 2. And my last one, f of 3, tells me the floor of 3 squared over 2, which is the floor of 9 over 2. And the floor of 9 over 2, which is basically 4.5, is 4. So these would be my solutions, 0, 0, 2, 4. Up next, we are going to switch gears and talk a little bit about sequences. So it's an introduction to sequences.